Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus in Sequila. This is a free preview of patron-only content that's available to patrons. It is a conversation about the Eastern Catholic perspective on Fatima with my good friend Lyndon Preddy. If you'd like to watch the full show, please become a patron. Patreon.com slash Meaning of Catholic. Thank you for your support. God bless. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Advocate, Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of blessings, bestower of life, come and dwell within us. Cleanse us from all that defiles us, and, O oh good one, save our souls. It is truly right to bless you. O God-bearing one, as the ever-blessed and immaculate mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and by far more glorious than the seraphim, ever a virgin, you gave birth to God the Word. O true mother of God, we magnify you. In the name, in the name of the name Father, of and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brethren in Christ, Laudato Jesus Christus. In secula. This is Timothy Flanders with the meaning of Catholic, Jesus is King. I am joined today by my, my friend, Lyndon Preddy, the Bradger Dad. Lyndon, how you doing? Oh, I am doing very well today, brother. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, looking forward to this conversation. This is part of a uh, informal series we've done at Meaning of Catholic covering Fatima and covering various perspectives on Fatima. Mm -hmm. uh, we've covered um, the Russian consecration under Pius XII. We've done uh, debates between me and Kennedy, various different uh, guests. And it's certainly fitting that we have an Eastern Catholic perspective because obviously Fatima is all about Russia. That's right. And uh, so there's a lot to get into. And we want to emphasize once again that uh, meaning of Catholic is about uniting Catholics against the enemies of Holy Church. And we distinguish between what we what is not open for debate and what is. And Fatima being a private revelation is very much a lot of the specifics and details of Fatima are open for debate, um, even after the Vatican's 2000 uh, sort of interpretation. Uh, so. There's a lot to discuss, and as always, uh, we want to hear all perspectives, and uh, I always give a disclaimer that me personally, I don't really have a strong opinion because I have not studied this very, very uh, closely and, and extensively, um, but uh, this is a very great uh, perspective that we want to discuss is um, from Lyndon. So, Lyndon, do you want to just, uh, I don't know where you want to start, do you want to just talk about your your personal journey with Fatima or sure. where do you want to go? Yeah, I think that would be a great place to start, uh, Tim. So um, thanks again for having me on. Um, yeah, so I can say personally that my journey um, with the with the message of the apparitions of Our Lady at Fatima began probably about five years ago. And I mean, I had um, to delve deeper into source materials like the um, the memoirs that we have of Sister Lucia. And then, you know, even looking at correspondence that she had later on in her life, she obviously didn't do a lot of formal interviews, but we do have some and we do have records of those and records of who who she was with, who the translator was. 
Um, and, and all of those things kind of continue to add up. So I started to, to reassess my, my position on, on the apparitions themselves and how to interpret them and, and especially in how to interpret the message. And then I started to read, um, a book that it's not associated with, with the Fatima apparitions, but there was just a passage in it that really just sparked a, a, a new curiosity, uh, for me. And that was the book, um, by, um, Father Josef de Vocht, who was a Belgian redemptorist, and he wrote the this book, um, Eternal Memory, which is the sort of definitive biography of Father Achille de Lair, the founder of the Byzantine redemptorists in Canada, sort of breadcrumbs that led me to to some some really interesting findings. Um, one of the first ones, and this is connected to the the beautiful icon that you have on the on the. Uh, uh, cover for this for this episode that was commissioned by the current pastor of the Russian Greek Catholic Mission pardon me in St. Petersburg Father Alexander Burgos who is a ethnic uh, Spaniard um, actually I believe he's of um, he's an Opus Dei priest who began working in Russia um, he 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 I think he traveled in Russia in like around the year 2000 but he became I believe by ritual in the year 2002 that's when he in according to his writings that's when he started um work on this icon and um uh he I, again he doesn't really talk about or at least he hasn't in the writings of his that are available in english talk about his personal connection to um our lady of fatima but it's it's very clear that father burgos had a, a love of the message of our lady of fatima and saw the need for on the ground work of spreading devotion to her and to her immaculate heart, especially um, in in Russia on the on in the lands of Russia, and so he actually um, got the um, with the permission of of the bishop. So this is something that's really kind of I've noticed about the difference between like especially like Father Burgos is probably the number one promoter. Of the message of, of Our Lady of Fatima, amongst Russians in gen, like Russian Catholics in general, but especially the Byzant, Russian Byzantine Catholics, and his, his, I think, I really think that his mission, like, and that, that's why he chose Toboyu Yedinstvo as the title of this icon, is that he really sees his mission. Uh, spreading this devotion to bring Orthodox back into communion with Rome. He sort of just related to me. He said, "Oh yeah, um, uh, Shaptitsky, uh, Andrei Shaptitsky died with a statue of Our Lady of Fatima at his at his deathbed." And I'm like, "Oh, really?" He's like, "Yep." I'm like, "What else do we, do we do we know if Metropolitan Andrei Shaptitsky had a devotion to Our Lady of Fatima?" He's just like, "My most recent research." which hasn't, which it's kind of, I've kind of hit a, um, a bit of a hurdle, um, you could say. So I was, um, reading another, I was reading another book. Um, this one is called, um, witness to apparitions and persecutions in the USSR, uh, by Josip Tarelia. He was a, uh, Ukrainian Greek Catholic sort of underground, um, church organizer. Uh, he spent at least, I believe almost 20 years in the Google gulag systems for his work with the Ukrainian Greek Catholic underground church. Um, he also is an alleged visionary, um, to apparitions of our lady. Um, as far as I understand it, they've never really been like looked into or, or, and have definitely not been approved by the church. So I kind of, you know, more or less glossed over some of, some of that part of this, of the book. Um, not to say that there couldn't be, obviously there, there could be validity to them. I just know that the church hasn't, hasn't ruled in that, in that, um, way, um, to date. Um, but one thing that Tarelia mentions, um, so his apparitions, um, his alleged apparitions rather are sort of connected to a very, uh, sort of a site that's known for, um, apparitions in the Ukrainian Greek Catholic church, which is the village of Hrushiv. Um, and Hrushiv is in the, um, Western part of Ukraine. It's in the Lviv, um, sort of oblast region, oblast region. And, um, so this place is known to have at least two, um, verified, um, sort of miraculous events. There's a mirac miraculous icon of Our Lady of Hrushiv, 
um, which has healed, you know, a lot of people. There's also a well with water that is also associated with healings, which has been approved by the church um, in Hrushiv. Um, then um, Tarelia brings up the fact, and he connects it to our, to the message of Our Lady of Fatima, um, that uh, according to Tarelia, in 1914, there was um, an apparition of Our Lady at the church in Hrushiv to at least 70 different like farmers. Um, and he kind of says that the apparition had something to do with, you know, warning about the, the start of world war one, um, warning about, um, the, the coming of the Bolshevik revolution. Um, and you know what I, it's, it's, it's so strange because like, I tried to find like further resources or, or citations about this alleged apparition in 1914 at Hrushiv. And I found a couple other English um, resources that that basically mention the exact same narrative that that uh, Tarelia brings up. Um, but there, I I, and I tried to search for the same thing in Ukrainian, and I wasn't able to find any reference at all to any like official Ukrainian Greek Catholic um, church publication even mentioning the 1914 apparitions. Um, there is apparently they're currently undergoing. Um, I believe, um, review in Ukraine. So there was an alleged, um, visionary named Marina in, in Hrushiv in 1987. And, um, I, he kind of gets into a little bit of, of the message. It's not, I don't really have a lot to, to say on that specific point because it's not really connected to Our Lady of Fatima per se. But, um, so I know that the church is looking into the 1987 apparitions at Hrushiv, uh, to, to assess their validity. And, um, Tarelia brings up that point. Um, but yeah, the only other, and this is, this is really strange. The only other, um, reference besides Tarelia and some, some sort of anonymous bloggers about this 19, the 1914 apparitions are strangely enough, the world apostolate of Fatima. So the world apostolate of Fatima, for those who don't know, has a Byzantine branch. Um, it's under the Byzantine Catholic church in America, the Ruthenians of, of, um, of America, Ruthenian Greek Catholic church of America. And they have a, um, branch, um, under the archbishop metropolitan of Pittsburgh, and they have a Fatima icon that they promote as part of their, um, their apostolate. And when you look at it, it's sort of, it's a, it's a, so, um, in contrast to Father Burgos and the Taboyu Yedinstvo icon, um, the icon of the Byzantine World Apostolate of Fatima is of um, you know the um, uh, Our Lady at the at the bush in in the um, Kova da Iria in 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 Fatima. So it's it's that image done as an icon. But it's interesting because on one side they sort of have like the Kova da Iria sort of surrounding. Um, uh, sort of topography of the land. And then the other side, they have a different one. And the, the, the writer of the icon says that that's Hrushiv and that they can, they're, they're actually connecting, um, the apparition in 1917 of Our Lady to the 1914 apparitions at Hrushiv. And they kind of go into, and again, they recount the same sort of narrative that, um, Tarelia mentions. So apparently, and apparently this icon has been sort of approved by the, um, Metropolitan is Pitts, Pittsburgh and officially blessed and everything. And, and it's promoted by the world apostle of Fatima, at least the Byzantine branch. But again, I can't find any solid evidence about these 1914 apparitions besides, you know, apparently the world apostle of Fatima sort of tacitly uh, endorsing them, even though they, they are very clear to indicate that they haven't been officially approved. Um, so yeah, I'm still, I'm still doing further research into that. Um, because it seems strange that I have these two different sources, uh, Tarelia's autobiography and the world apostolate of Fatima, both agreeing on the, a connection to the apparitions of Our Lady, uh, alleged apparitions in Hrushiv in 1914. Mm -hmm.